Good morning guys, this is Sajina. Today we can see ultrastructure of yeast. This is the ultrastructure of yeast. This is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Here we can see an oval shaped cell and the size and the shape of the yeast will vary with the species. And here we can see a cell wall. Inside the cell wall plasma membrane can be seen and the cytoplasm or cytosol with various cytoplasmic organelles. Here we can see a bud which is attached to the parent cell. Coming to the detailed structure, yeast about 1500 species of yeast can be seen. They are mainly belonging to Phylum Ascomycota. Some are seen in Basidiomycota also. They are worldwide in distribution, seen in soil, plant surfaces, flower, nectar, fruits, etc. We can see economically important Ascomycid yeast, for example, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, used in baking and brewing industries. Some pathogenic yeast can also be seen. Some examples are Candida albicans, Histoplasma, Blastomyces, Cryptococcus, etc. Yeast, they are single-celled organisms, eukaryotic organisms or eukaryotic fungi. They are larger than most bacteria, 1 to 5 micrometers in width and 5 to 30 micrometers in length. Size and shape varies among species. They lack flagella or other organs of locomotion. And yeast cell, they have a distinct cell wall enclosing granular cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm contain a special large vacuole and nucleus and all cytoplasmic organelles. The nucleus, it has a nuclear membrane and the nuclear membrane, it is porous in nature and inside the nucleus, we can see a dense opaque portion called nucleolus. It is crescent shaped and a translucent portion which contain the chromatin material. 90% of this material, it is DNA and we can see some RNA and polyphosphate compounds. Then coming to the cell wall, we can see three cross-linked layers and the inner layer, outer layer and the intermediate layer. Inner layer, it is mainly composed of glucan and the outer layer, manoproteins, intermediate layer, it's a mixture of both inner and outer layers. And here, another importance is that on budding, we can see on the detachment of bud from the cell wall, the parent cell, it will form a scar on the surface of the cell wall and it is called bud scar and the daughter cell, it also develops a scar, it is called the birth scar and the bud scar, it is mainly composed of chitin. And coming to the vacuole, vacuole it is varying in size according to the state of activity of the cell and this large vacuole it is surrounded by a unit membrane and it contains granules and also some strands. These strands are connecting the granules to form a network inside the vacuole and the vacuole it contains mainly some storage substances or storage granules probably involving volatile granules. And the vacuole, here we can see these are the centers of proteolysis and the brewer's yeast vacuole it is very large and the vacuole it contains membrane bound structures that stores nutrients and the vacuoles it contains enzymes in the acidic environment for proteolysis and also for lysis of other complex molecules and they are also playing an important role in storing materials and maintaining homeostasis. And Coming to the plasma membrane, the plasma membrane it is semi-permeable lipid bilayer. We have already heard about eukaryotic plasma membranes and their functions. Some important functions are given below. Please go through these functions. And the plasma membrane it is highly flexible and it contains mainly lipid sterols and proteins. Coming to the cytoplasm again, the cytoplasm it is called cytosol, it contains granules and the cytoplasm it contains enzymes involved in anaerobic fermentation for the production of ATP and nucleus we have already discussed it is surrounded by a double unit membrane. Then cytoplasm also contains storage granules and the reserve materials are mainly present in the form of oil globules, glycogen and volatin. Coming to mitochondria, it is having the similar role in plants and animals uh, that is the they are involved in respiration, growth and homeostasis. They are involved in energy production through oxidative phosphorylation. And here also we can see endoplasmic reticulum and it is also playing an important role in the cytoplasm and polyribosomes they are involved in protein synthesis and the plasma reticulum also involved in initiation of bud formation the key players involved are golgi apparatus endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes who are managing the traffic system in the cytoplasm
there is no chloroplast in yeast cells. This is the ultrastructure of yeast cell. Here we can see this is the ultrastructure of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is a budding yeast cell. Here we can see a cell wall and inside the cell wall we can see the plasma membrane. Inside we can see the cytoplasm or cytosol. It is granular. It, here it is a centrally placed vacuole. Vacuole contains granules collected, connected by strands to form a network. We have already seen the functions of vacuoles. And here this is the nucleus. Nucleus it is having a porous nuclear membrane and the nucleus contain nucleolus and nuclear material. The nuclear material it is mainly DNA and here other structures are mitochondria, Golgi apparatus, storage, granules etc. In the bud we can see the bud vacuole and a portion of the nucleus it is migrating into the bud. Bud also contain mitochondria, storage vacuoles and all other cell organelles. After enlargement, the bud gets detached from the parent cell, leaving a scar on the parent cell and this is the scar, it is called bud scar and here the bud also, that is the daughter cell, it is also getting a scar and it is called birth scar. Hope you will understand the ultrastructure of yeast and this is the simple ultrastructure of yeast. Next we can see reproduction in yeast. That is, yeast can reproduce asexually and sexually. A sexual mode of reproduction, it is by budding and fission. Based on this, we can see two groups of yeast, that is fission yeast and budding yeast. That is, fission yeast are schizosaccharomyces and budding yeast are zygosaccharomyces. Here, this is the diagram showing budding, that is the parent cell. Here, a bud is formed as a swelling and this swelling gradually enlarges and the nucleus of the parent cell, it divides by mitosis one nucleus it migrates to the bud and after that achieving after achieving growth the bud get detached from the parent cell to form new yeast cell second method is fission in fission we can see this is the parent cell parent cell gets slightly enlarged or elongated after that the nucleus undergo division this is followed by the division of protoplasm to form two equal daughter cells we can see spores also, asexual and sexual spores. Asexual spores are blastospores formed by budding and sexual spores are ascospores which are formed in ascus. And yeast may be homothallic or heterothallic in nature and sexual reproduction of yeast it was first recognized by Guillermont and he demonstrated the copulation of yeast nuclei and the subsequent stages leading to formation of ascospores and the number and shape of the ascospores are variable and here we can see this is two examples of ascospores. Here we can see this is an ascus which contains eight ascospores. It is uh, Schizosaccharomyces. Here we can see another yeast. Here uh, it is only four ascospores uh, present, and these four ascospores they are different in shape when compared to these ascospores. Here they are having hat shape. And 1940 Guillermont showed that three life cycle patterns are distinguishable among yeast. Coming to the patterns. First one is haplobiontic life cycle. This is exhibited mainly by Schizosaccharomyces octosporus. And here it is homothallic in nature. Two stages can be seen in haplophase or haploid stage, diplophase or diploid stage. The haploid stage it is elaborate or long. Diploid stage it is very small. It is confined to the zygotic stage only. Meiosis of the diploid zygote nucleus takes place immediately after karyogamy. A beak-like protuberance will be developed from the conjugating cell at the part of the contact and this protuberance later on get dissolved to form a conjugation tube. Karyogamy is occurring in the conjugation tube to form diploid zygote and this zygote undergoes meiosis and zygote itself it is developing into an ascus and meiosis it is followed by mitosis to form eight haploid nuclei. Each nuclei gets surrounded with cytoplasm to form eight ascospores. This is a diagrammatic representation. Here these A, A and B cells, here a beak-like protuberance is formed and after that these protuberance get dissolved to form a conjugation tube. Inside the tube we can see karyogamy. This is followed by meiosis. Then, then mitosis occurs to form eight haploid nuclei. Each nuclei gets surrounded by cytoplasm to form eight ascospores and these are liberated and they can function as somatic cells. That is haplobiontic cycle.
Next, we can see diplobiontic life cycle. It is seen by or shown by saccharomycotes. That is, here the diploid somatic stage is long and haploid stage is short. And the diploid somatic cells, they produce buds which eventually enlarges to form ascus and the diploid nucleus divides to form four haploid nuclei and this result in formation of four haploid ascus pores and they remain confined in the ascus and copulate there forming two diploid cells. And each diploid cell is germinate by a germ tube which pushes out through the ascus which ultimately forming a tubular structure. This tubular structure it can behave as a mycelium and from which diploid cells are produced by budding. Thus the haploid stage is very small and is represented only by ascospores. That is this is a diagrammatic representation. Here we can see the This is the yeast cell. This is in 2N condition. It undergo meiosis to form four ascospores. Here, inside the ascus, these four ascospores, they fuse with each other to form two. And again, the diploid condition, it will be formed here. This fusion results in diploid condition. Here also, we can see plasmog plasmogamy is also occurring, resulting in diploid cell formation. That is 2N condition. And this diploid cell, it undergo germination to form a sprout mycelium. And from the mycelium, budding yeast cells will be produced. The budding yeast cells are also in the 2N condition. That is the N condition or the haploid condition. It can be seen only in this ascospores. On fusion of the ascospores, the diploid condition, it is again ca coming, that is plasmogamy, karyogamy, diploid cell. It undergo germination to form sprout mycelium. Again, it is 2N condition. And this sprout mycelium, it produces buds. And these buds get detached to form yeast cell. These yeast cells are also in 2N condition. Therefore, diploid stage is predominating here. Third one is haplodiplobiontic. Life cycle, it is shown by Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Here, the life cycle contains both haploid and diploid phases in equal. That is, it is shared equally. That is somewhat, it is similar to alternation of generation. Two haploid cells copulate, forming a diploid cell. Diploid cell multiply by budding, producing large number of diploid cells. Eventually, each diploid cell behave as an ascus, bearing for ascospores. Meiosis takes place, developing. During the development of ascospores, ascospores are liberated from the ascus, multiply by budding producing haploid cells. That is, it's a diagrammatic representation. Here we can see, these are the two cells. That is, here a haploid condition can be seen. That is, uh, they are fusing by again conjugation. That's a conjugation tube will be formed resulting in plasmogamy and karyogamy to form diploid 2N condition. This is the diplo phase. This undergo budding to form large number of diploid cells. That is, large number of diploid copies will be produced by budding. Then this is followed by meiosis. On meiosis, this diploid stage, it is converted to haploid condition. That is, N condition will be attained. That is, ascospores are in haploid condition. These ascospores, again, they undergo budding. Budding to form, again, haploid cells will be produced. That is, these ascospores are liberated by the breakage of this ascus. And these uh, released ascospores, they undergo budding to form again haploid cells. That is N condition. This again undergo conjugation and the cycle get repeated. That is the haplodiplobiontic life cycle of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Hope you all understand the life cycle and the ultrastructure of yeast that is mainly Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Thank you. Have a nice day.